Hello. Mixtresses, mixers. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. So I'm gonna talk some shit out with strangers on the internet right now. Come along. Um, yeah. <laughs> some of y'all aren't strangers. So, okay. The, what I've been thinking about this week as far as like in terms of like the divination cards that work best for me, it has to do with symbolic language, I think. I don't know. It's one of the things that it has to do with. Let's burn some incense. Shall we? Hmm, what do we want? Coconut, vanilla, vampire blood, or clove? Choose below in the poll. Uh, I also have something else here. What is that one? Sandalwood. Ooh, I haven't done sandalwood in a while. Let's do that. I forgot I had that one out. Okay. So I think what I'm going to show you in this video, primarily I'm going to show you things that are in my giveaway box that I will likely be letting go of soon. So I'm going to talk about, um, symbolic language. Now I think a deck can there are several ways that a deck can have a symbolic language. So it can be like rooted in esoteric symbolism, like, like the Rider Waite Smith is. It can be like a complete like artist specific type of symbolism. Um, that they made up themselves, a world that they have created, perhaps. Um, like in the case of um, Ludi Luskett or Tarot of the Cat People. These are like well-developed landscapes in those decks. It is a very specific world that you feel like you're walking into. Or the symbolic language in the deck can be visual. Like maybe in a particular deck, a particular symbol means a particular thing, and you notice that symbol showing up throughout the deck. And that gives you a little bit more information about that particular tarot deck. Um, so let me show you first an example of a deck and I do have several in my collection that I think do this well. This is the thing, like symbolic language is kind of similar to a term that I've used before that I call internal consistency. Like particularly with tarot decks, I'm not quite as harsh on Oracle. However, I don't like Oracle as much in general. Like I have more tarot than I do Oracle. Um, but particularly like I'm pretty harsh on tarot decks. Like I want them to be very consistent within themselves. I want the artists to have created their own symbolic language and have their own sort of like world building. Um, I want them to have a specific thing to say with their tarot deck. Otherwise, why am I not just using the Rider White Smith, right? Which is a beautiful deck. Um, I think it's the only one that I need, quote unquote. But okay, so here's an example of one that I think does a specific world and a specific symbolic language well, and that's Santa Marge. So it is, hey, guess what's on top? The Santa Marge card. So not only are the images beautiful within themselves, but we also have um, consistent 
I'm gonna pull a pull a little bit. I'm gonna pull some cards. Of course, I didn't do this beforehand, but there's many examples in this particular deck of consistent symbolism. I'm gonna pull aside the aces, the tens, the court cards. I prepare because I'm just like not the person that prepares I just I don't never have never will I mean you probably get the idea without me pulling every single card but I'm already almost done so I might as well continue okay there's all the aces okay all right so there's many I mean, this is a consistent world. Not only does this, some decks that I feel like have consistent symbolic language, it's, it's a world and it's not, it's a world, but it's not necessarily like symbolic, specific symbolic language that repeats throughout the deck. But with, what is this? Oh, okay. This is just me flipping through cards. It'll be my discard pile. <laughs> um... So some decks are just a world and some decks have specific, it's almost like you're establishing a language with a tarot deck. Um, in my, in my mind, if you're establishing a language and building a world, I want to feel, I don't want to be taken out of that world by a card that doesn't seem to fit the theme of the rest of the deck. I don't want to be taken out of a deck with like just pretty you know, another, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this video, but I might call it like style versus substance because the thing that the trap that I've fallen into over and over and over again with buying tarot and Oracle decks is that I will see a deck on screen and I'll think, oh my God, that's so pretty. And then I'll buy it because it's pretty. And it turns out it doesn't actually have any more substance than it's pretty. So there's a deck that's in my like discard box, giveaway box, whatever you want to call that. Purgatory. That I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. I haven't decided. But it's one that I think does not have a symbolic language despite it at first looking like it does. We'll get there. But this deck, I think, not only creates a consistent world, this is the world of Santa Muerte. This is the world of Day of the Dead. This is a Hispanic deck. This is a world that like I'm not a part of because I'm just a white girl, but I get to visit it. And it also has a symbolic language that is specific to the deck itself. So let me put, organize my piles and just go one at a time here with okay so the aces this is something that I've talked about before that I I find to be important or not maybe not necessarily important but it's important to me something that's important to me is I like it when the aces have a relationship to each other which this deck clearly does and we even go so far as to, I'll show the court cards next. So let's, let me put them into their categories here real quick. And we have color coordination within the suits, which is something that I also really appreciate. You know, most of the wands are going to be, there's a lot of reds. Most, and in the background of the court cards of the wands, we have this pink background and it's the same background in all of them. And we also, we have playing card associations as well. You have the hearts for the cups 
and all of the court cards in the cups have heart eyes. I actually want to see, like, is that the case? Yeah, it is. And throughout the entire suit as well. He's got hard eyes. There's hard eyes on the seven of cups. Let me actually, I didn't mean for it, this to be like so consistent or so thorough with just me looking at this one deck, but I'm, I'm realizing that it warrants it. So I'm going to separate actually the major arcana from everything else. So, and this is obviously like something that like may not be important to others, but this sort of like symbolic language, internal consistency, style versus substance, like for some people, it may be that your first impressions of a deck stay your, stay what, how you feel about it forever. That's not the case with me. Whenever I see a tarot deck that is pretty online and maybe the first time I open it up, I'm awed by its beauty, that is not necessarily a good indicator on whether or not I'm going to love it. Okay, um, swords. So all the sword, sword core cards have this yellow background. Um, honestly, it's not very different than the pentacles. I wish the color differentiation was a little bit starker, but that's like one of the only complaints I have with the symbolic language specifically of this particular deck. And I've had this one for um, four years. Five? Four. Four and a half. So there's that. And then we have diamond eyes and green backgrounds. It actually looks a little bit better on camera, but it doesn't, like as far as the different colors, it looks more green on camera than it does in person. And this is a well thought out tarot deck. Um, oh yeah, I wanna show you the tens. And I think I've showed, I mean, I've shown this deck on my channel a lot because I've had it for four years. Like I've already pointed out some of these things, but um, I guess this, <laughs> this video might be titled like style versus substance, internal consistency, symbolic language featuring Santa Muerte, but I'm going to be talking about other decks too. I have a whole pile. This is going to be a deck parade video, which is everybody's favorite. So cool. Maybe I'll get some views. Um, Another thing that I love about this deck that is a symbolic language that is specific to this deck, we have these moths um, and butterflies. I think these, these well, this one's like more of a moth body. This one looks a little bit more like a butterfly, but anyway, whatever, moths, butterflies. And we have like the hip bones here for the wands, you know, sort of sacral chakra, right? Is that the one? Rib cage for heart, cups, skulls for head, swords, mind, and then feet for pentacles. How fucking cool is that? I mean, it's so fucking cool. Like, I wish more decks did this kind of thing where they thought it through. Like, what is the story of this tarot deck? I mean, you can get lost in the world of this tarot deck. And you're not going to suddenly come upon a card that doesn't make sense. You know, it is consistent. It's time was spent on it. And then in the case of, I just pulled this out just, just to show you the case of the emperor and emperor, empress. They fit together. They're part of one scene. They go together which is fucking cool, right? And even like when it comes to, I'm finding that overall I prefer, 
and you know I have some with some without like you know but I prefer decks with borders intentional borders this is an example of a tarot deck that has an intentional border it's stylistic they look sort of like not literally but it it does give me kind of loteria card vibes this particular style of border and it's consistent throughout the deck you've got the roman numerals on the majors and then with the minors you have the number the numbers on the sides and then the suit on the bottom consistency it's a beautiful thing and even like the backs of the cards you have that same border scheme and it's reversible for people that enjoy that kind of shit. And are these like, these are just like some of the most beautiful backs I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> the point is this tarot deck is, I'm just going to flip through the majors just for fun, is consistent. It knows what it is. It has been thought out. It's not just pretty imagery. Um, for me personally, I it's not enough for me, with one exception, which I'll show you, to just have pretty pictures. The only time that it has been enough for me, which I guess this is a good time to, this is not just, just about Santa Muerte, so I'm going to put this away. And show you an example. So this was the example of a tarot deck that I'm keeping that has a very strong internal language. A strong symbolic language, internal consistency, slash um, world building. It has it. It has it. This is one that I'm keeping that has it. One that I'm keeping that doesn't have it is Moonchild. And the reason why I think this one is an exception for me because, okay, so here's, here's what I mean by this. Okay, are we in order? Oh my god, we are. Okay, <laughs> which means I haven't used it since I did that unfair comparison. I guess that was only like a month ago that I did it. Well, I thought I was going to do an unfair comparison between this and Goddess of Love, but then I didn't. That's what happened. So this is, I mean, like... I think the reason why this one is an exception for me, it does have some symbolic language, actually, which is just sort of a carbon copy of Rider-Waite-Smith, right? There is some symbolic language, but it's card by card, you know? And it's not always that consistent. Like, we, we have the two pillars with the Hierophant here. We have a Chariot. We have a lion on the strength card. So it's, it was not terribly consistent. Like some of the themes are consistent. Like the color scheme is consistent with this deck. The, um, what else is consistent? There's a lot of Egyptian mythology or Egyptian visuals symbolism. There's some Rider Waite Smith symbolism. So, in general, I would say that this tarot deck is not what I would say is internally consistent. However, the reason why it's an exception for me, which I keep starting that sentence and not finishing it, is because I got it back when I had like less than 10 tarot decks. I've had it for a really long time with the exception of like letting it go, getting it back, letting it go, getting it back again. <laughs> so this is my second copy of it actually, but it works for me because I spent a lot of time with it and I made it work for me. I created my own love of it that is like, to be honest, pretty rooted in surface level aesthetics. I like it because it's pretty. And this is really, I think, the only deck that I've kept that I like for that surface level reason. 
because because I just while I was learning tarot I was using this deck a lot and it has just become familiar to me but how often like if if we're a person and I've been there I've been there for years I'm just coming out of it if we're a person that has acquired a lot of tarot and oracle decks are we going to have the time to spend with a deck that doesn't communicate clearly from where it is, from what it is? If it doesn't know what it is, it's not for me anymore. And this is the exception because I've, because of all those reasons I already said. Because I don't think that deck has a specific symbolic language. Some of the cards are Rider White Smith. Some of them are just pretty bitches meditating. It has some consistency. Like I said, the artwork is all done by the same person. It's got a consistent color scheme. It, in general, the cards are either going for Egyptian portals, pretty meditating bitches, or Rider White Smith. Those are like your three options, right? Um... So it, I mean, it has some consistency, but it's not like Tarot of Vampires or something where like you can keep uncovering layer upon layer upon layer and you can find, um, yeah, it's, it's not that consistent. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I don't know how to talk about this. Here's a deck that I'm not keeping that I don't think has really any consistency at all. And that is Modern Nirvana. I went back and watched my sort of like first impressions of this oracle, which wasn't that long ago, really. It was like three or four months ago. And I could hear myself saying all of these things that ultimately ended up being red flags for me. You know, a red flag for me is when a deck doesn't work for me, so I immediately do this kind of shit where I add my own key phrases and stuff. I ended up trashing the box, trashing the guidebook, taking out several of the cards and trashing those. So now I have an incomplete Oracle deck with no guidebook and no box that I want to get rid of, which unfortunately probably means it's going to go in the recycling bin, which is unfortunate because if I had kept the extra cards, the book and the box for a period of time, I mean, I like the, I like the cardstock. It's matte and shuffleable. I like some of the, I like a lot of the artwork. I like some of, so with this one, you know, you have sort of like phrases like Kintsugi and Miktub, and then you have more basic Oracle concepts like gratitude, friction, protection. So I thought that I would be able to use this particular deck as a basic Oracle deck. Boat, that one didn't really fit, which is why I put the keyword transition on it. Compassion, discernment. And some of the images I don't think match up with the concepts. So that was one of the problems. And it also just like, what are you trying to be? Are you trying to be a basic Oracle deck? Or are you trying to teach me, you know, obscure concepts like Kintsugi and Mektub, which I'm sure that's not how you say that. And not necessarily like that, that, that those two things don't belong together in one deck. But I just, I feel like I can't grasp the personality of what this deck is. And there were a lot of cards that just confused me. And that just took me out of it. So, yeah. Getting rid of this one, for sure. Because I don't... Yeah. And, like, Oracle decks can be a little bit more... Um... 
more free. Like you can just have keywords on Oracle decks, but you know, I already have that. I have Vintage Wisdom for that. And I thought that I wanted something other than Vintage Wisdom, uh, like a different choice. <laughs> but it turns out I didn't. And so now I have this incomplete deck held together by a hair tie <laughs> and a burned out candle. So let's fix that. Hold please while I find another tea light candle. So I really didn't necessarily need to show that one, except that I wanted to like give an update. I'm kind of doing a goodbye right now for these decks that I'm not keeping. I think that's the idea. That was my goodbye of modern Nirvana. Um, not, not really bittersweet because I never really got along with it actually. And I really tried to convince myself. That's, that's something that I'm learning as I go through this process of acquiring all the tarot and oracle decks in the universe and then getting rid of most of them. Because, okay, so something happened to me this week. Um, a friend, uh, she's been, she has like a credit on her Amazon, so she's been kind of like looking for a tarot and oracle. Um, she wanted to buy a tarot deck and an oracle deck that kind of went with each other. And so she was going through and looking and looking and like asking me about different ones. Like, what do you think about this one? And almost every time it was a deck that I had had and gotten rid of. And it was just like a wake up call for me because it was like almost everything she was mentioning. I had an experience with it. <laughs> so it was like, holy shit. I, I really don't know. And I have not done the whole, like, let's get obsessive and try to count, but I may. I don't know how many decks have passed through my hands in the last five years, but it's been an absurd number, to be honest. I mean, for me, obviously, like, I'm speaking about my own experience here, but it, to me, is appalling. So, um, I have found that it's a red flag for me. What was I starting to say? If I, when I first get a deck, think to myself, well, if I change this about it and this about it and this about it, it might work. Like nine times out of 10, if I change all those things, if I add the keywords, if I draw on the cards, if I trim them, take the keywords off, change the keywords, add keywords, if I do all that shit, it's just me trying to convince myself to like it when I'm just not going to. So there's that. Here's another one that I have had for a very long time. I got it in like January, 2019. It is in order right now because I'm about to, I'm probably gonna list this one on eBay most likely because um, I might actually be able to get 20 or 30 bucks out of it or something. And I've been doing that lately. I've actually been allowing myself to like make some money off of these damn things that I regret. This one, I it was a gift, so I didn't have to pay for it. But so here's another example of one that does not have a consistent symbolic language. And it's one of the biggest deal breakers for me. Like this card is very Rider Waite Smith, right? This one, I mean, I get it, I guess. No, this is just a pretty bitch wearing some, wearing some Venus earrings. That's all. This is just a pretty bitch wearing a crown. Like it's, yeah, it's not consistent. I love this though. I mean, there's definitely cards in here because I've used this deck for, you know, almost five years. I've used it, but I've never really connected to it besides just like, and there's some cards in here that are just straight up knockoffs of Rider Waite Smith, like this one, whereas others completely deviate. Like this is interesting. If the entire deck had been a world slash a symbolic language that fits with this, but you know, looking at the death card next to the temperance card, these don't look like 
despite being done by the same artist, which you can tell that, these don't look like two cards that belong in the same deck, in my opinion. You know, it does not make sense to me. That being said, it does have aces that go together because they're all Rider Waite Smith aces. I love the aces in this deck, but that's the most consistent thing about the entire deck is that the aces all look like aces. <laughs> and there's definitely some cards that I enjoy, like the Eight of Swords, but you can get a print of the Eight of Swords, which I might actually do. I think I had one at one point, but I, I must have gotten destroyed or something. Like, I like this as an Eight of Swords. You know, she is tangled up in her things. That's definitely something that I relate to. But overall, it does not make sense. So, Momula is one of the nicknames I have for my mom. So it is sad for me to like, one of the only reasons I've kept this deck so long is because I, my mom gave it to me. And if I ever regretted letting it go and wanted to get it again, I'd have to buy it for myself. But I'm not going to do that. This is still one that, like, I keep putting in the giveaway box and then taking back out and then putting in and then taking back out. But, like, the only reason that I even reach for it is to decide if I want it. So, obviously, that means I don't, right? That's what that means. So that's probably going up on eBay like today. Okay, another example of, this one doesn't necessarily fit in the theme today of like um, symbolic language, consistent, internal consistency, all that shit. But it's just one that like I can't seem to connect to. But it also like I don't take it that seriously anyway. So I might keep this one. I don't know. Um, it's an animal deck, and I love animal decks. I love the backs. I find it endearing that the artwork is so bad. I like that it has a consistent bordering scheme. But there's a lot of cards in here I just don't like. So if I'm pulling an animal energy, if I'm trying to pull an animal energy, and then I come up with this fairy card. I'm like, no, that's not what I'm looking for. So it's possible I'll take some cards out of this deck. But again, like I have other animal decks that I like better than this one. I mean, to be quite honest with you, the reason I'm keeping this deck is because it has a ferret in it. And I don't have any other animal decks that have a ferret. And they, oh, I just, they make me so happy. So what I would love is to be able to just allow myself to only pull this deck out once a year and just enjoy it when I decide to pull it out and then leave it alone the rest of the time and forget about it. It remains to be seen if I will be able to forget about it or if I need to, because I've been very brutal lately. Like if something is not perfect, I'm letting it go instead of like, instead of like, because logically my brain's like, well, things do not need to be perfect. You have this thing. You already paid for this thing. You have this thing. It's in your possession. It's not taking up that much space. Just use it if you want to use it and leave it alone if you don't. Like logically I can tell myself that, but it doesn't work that way because I have emotions and my emotions tell me if I'm not using something, if it's not perfect, get it fuck out my house. So I don't know. <laughs> it's still, it's still a process guys. I mean, and 
I, I know a lot of people watching might be, God, bitch, you're overthinking this shit. Yeah, I know. But that's how I work. So I got to go with it. So here's the one that I'm really not sure about that I'm going to try to be the most thoughtful about because I had great first impressions of this one. So this is the last one I'm going to show in this video. And it is Goddess of Love Tarot. I can't decide if this has a consistent... Look at this terrible little makeup bag that I'm keeping it in. But whatever, it works. Um, I cannot decide if this has a symbolic language. I think it doesn't. So at first glance, it looks like it has some consistency and it does have some consistency. The color scheme is on point throughout the deck. In the swords, you have this beautiful like lavender background. Every uh, major arcana card is associated with a goddess. The cups all have this swirly water background. The wands all have this pink background, which is not very different from the swords but it's slightly different. What have we not seen yet? We haven't seen pentacles all have this gorgeous green. And there's a lot of repeated imagery throughout the deck, but repeated imagery does not translate to symbolism. There's a lot of hearts and roses in the deck. You've got the actual number of things on the card. So there's eight cups in the eight of cups. Oh, I love this three of swords. So for now, I am keeping this one. I have not decided definitively that I'm letting it go. But so far, when I've gotten it out to use it, I'm not getting a lot from it besides pretty. And as we've seen, as a rule, pretty is not enough for me. It's, it's enough for me to really enjoy using a deck fiercely for like two to three weeks and then I put it away and don't get it out again, which is what happened. I've had this deck exactly a month or a couple days more at this point, but I, I don't know. I, and, and this isn't like a completely thoughtless deck, you know? You've got the goddesses in the majors. You've got, you know, consistent color schemes within the suits. You even have a relationship between the fool and the world card, which I enjoy. Um, but I don't know if the symbolism is really... It seems to me what we're working with with this particular deck is that there was like... There's a collection of symbols like, okay, we're making this tarot deck. We're going to have statues. We're going to have roses. We're going to have hearts. We're going to have snakes. We're going to have uh, lots of vagina shit happening as well. Um, there is also, there's some consistency with like... Um, astrological because like seven of cups let's see is that venus is that a venus card yes it's venus and scorpio so we have a venus symbol on the seven of cups which we're entering into seven of cups like in the next couple days actually so this is sort of our card of the moment if you watch this in real time in mid-november 2023 so it's not devoid of symbolism but what I mean by this is like, okay, you see a snake in a card. Does this snake mean more than this is just one of the main symbols in this deck? Does it mean something for this particular card? And some of the time I think it does make sense and some of the time I don't. So I don't know. I'm definitely undecided about this one because... I was, I mean, if you guys saw my video where I was comparing this to Tantric Dakini, you would see that I was just 
flabbergasted by the beauty. And that is what we're seeing so often. And what I would like to do on this channel more is like actual, not first impressions videos. Like I've been working with this thing for four years. Here's how I feel about it. I'd like to start doing like actual reviews because what we see most of the time is first impressions because there's just so much out there and so many of us are caught whether we are enjoying it or not. I'm not trying to tell you that you're doing, you know, bad things for yourself or not. Like only you can decide that. But so many of us are caught in the cycle of just new thing, new thing, new thing, new thing, new thing. Whereas we don't ever progress beyond. For me, it's a red flag if I pull out a tarot or oracle deck and I'm still having the exact same thoughts that I had when I first took it out of the box. Because that, to me, tells me I haven't progressed with it. I have not actually learned. I haven't actually gotten to know it. Because something that I've been doing lately as I... I'm down to like 20 tarot decks and like 15 oracle decks, something like that. Um, quite small. Like my collection is smaller than it's been since early 2020 right now. And it's a very comfortable... Like I don't... Despite like the things that I'm showing you right now that I'm letting go of, I, that's not that many, you know, because I'm getting rid of things pretty quickly if I feel sure about it, you know? Um, but anyway, lately, something that I've been doing is, and one of the things I love about tarot is that you can come to it with anything. You can come to tarot with any fucking question. And I mean, most of the time, sometimes I'll have a deck that's like, does not want to come to me for, there are some things that it's like, I will not talk to you about this, fuck off. But most of the time, most tarot decks are really open and they will talk to you about anything. And so I've been getting to know my tarot decks in a different way lately. I've just been getting them out and kind of like feeling out their personalities and like conversing with them and like, how are you? What has your life been like? You know, I, I, uh, I asked some questions of my Pink Onk University Press, Rider Waite Smith, that's been around since the 60s. My copy's been around since the 60s and I like pulled a card for each decade. Like, what has your life been like? I pulled a card for 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, all the way through up till now. And I got like a timeline of the experience of that deck, you know? And it's so fun. You know, tarot is fun. And for me, it hasn't been fun for a while because my life has just been, here's a new thing. Do I like it? I don't know. Here's a new thing. Do I like it? I don't know. And I am sort of at this point in time feeling a bit distrustful of novelty. And I don't know if this, because this is my most recent tarot deck acquisition. Um, it's the only one that I have gotten in a few months, I think. I could be forgetting something, but I'm pretty sure this is my only new one. And I just, I don't know if I need it, you know? Because it is supposed to speak of sexuality, right? It's, this is supposed to be a deck about love and sexuality. And I mean, it definitely has sexual imagery, but... Like, okay, let's do, let's just do like a sample reading right now and see, see if it speaks to me. Cause that's the problem too, is that I haven't done a pick a pile reading in a long time. And sometimes that's how I know if I like a deck is when I use it in a pick a pile reading. <laughs> let's just do a mini collective reading right now. And we can talk to this deck about anything. So let's talk to it about novelty. What's up with novelty? And here's the thing too, is like this sort of concept of internal consistency and like symbolic language and blah, 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 blah. Like for me, if, if I just feel confused looking at the symbolism in a deck, 
or if I feel like it's not consistent, blah, blah, blah. If I feel confused trying to synthesize a reading together, then what is the point? You know, what is the point? And that's what happened to me this week. I got this deck out to use as my like primary deck and I was trying to do like little readings with it, have little conversations with Goddess of Love Tarot. And I was getting like nothing from her except, oh, I like that image or I don't like that image. It was all surface level. So that's why it went into the box. So we'll see if we have that same, that same experience now because flipping through it, and that's why also, how many times have we seen, like if we're the type of person that clicks on a video like this, and I am, how many times have we seen someone doing a declutter video and they've got this whole pile of decks that they're going through that they're pretty sure they're going to let go of, but they take them out to look at them and they talk themselves out of getting rid of them in the moment that they're looking at them. But I think that's a trap because it's, it's a totally different experience flipping through a deck versus reading with it, right? And that's what we don't see often on tarot YouTube. We don't often see people actually reading with the decks and in my experience, if I've ever been watching like a pick a pile reading or collective reading or something like that, when I've seen a deck being used in a reading, if I decide that I want that deck for myself and I go out and buy it, I have a better track record with actually liking it versus, are we still, did we go out? Oh, I actually just burned a whole stick of incense. That's what happened. <laughs> believe it's been that long that we've been talking. I guess it has been 45 minutes. Anyway, like it's completely different. And like most of the time, all we're seeing is people flipping through decks and we're seeing pretty, but something has to be more than pretty. It has to work for me. Whenever for me, like the, in my opinion, the trend of tarot and oracle decks is becoming more about here's an artist's work put into a tarot format. Like, great. <laughs> There's so many of those though. So how can we go deeper? And I find that I don't actually have that many tarot decks that I can go, that continue to uncover things for me, you know? the symbolism has to be very well thought out for it to be something that I can continue to unveil, continue to dig deeper into the layers of. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. But anyway, let's do our little reading. We have two of pentacles, five of cups, and hermit. Okay, this is sort of reinforcing why I put it in the box, to be honest. And we have some symbolism, but there's a lot of cards in this deck that have a heart with a sword through it. And so, of course, when you see a heart with some swords, you think of three of swords, right? So that for me is kind of like, it bugs me because at first glance, I'll be like, okay, three of swords. Nope. That's not three of swords. That's not three of swords. I mean, I get it. Five of cups is, can be about grief. You can be kind of broken hearted, but why do we have a sword and a cups card? You could have still had the heart with like, you know, some of these cups flipped over, maybe. I mean, obviously, you might be thinking, wow, this bitch is being real nitpicky. But we, we are able to do that now. We are able to be extremely nitpicky because there's thousands of options out there. So if something's not working, because I'm not synthesizing a reading together quickly with this. Because I'm distracted by, that. that's not the Three of Swords. 
And I'm also distracted by, wow, this is so pretty. This looks like a Christmas card. <laughs> okay, it's the Two of Pentacles. It's the Two of Pentacles. But, I mean, I like that it's a yin-yang, Two of Pentacles, and it has Saturn on it. So that makes me think that this is Saturn in what is Saturn in Taurus? Is Taurus two, three, and four of pentacles? I think so. It's got to be. I'm pretty sure this is Saturn in Taurus. You know what? At least with this guidebook, it tells you that so you can find it. So that's what, I mean, I definitely have not, no, it's Jupiter and Capricorn. Okay. Jupiter and Capricorn. Okay. So that's not, I mean, maybe it is Jupiter, but doesn't that look like, at first glance, that looks like Saturn to me. So I'm going to think Saturn when it's not. At first glance, this looks like the Three of Swords, but it's not. And this, I think, is Demeter. But it's also, for me, I have thought about putting the names of the goddesses on the Major Arcana cards. I thought about doing that, but I have not done it. Because I will always want to know that. Um, so yeah, it does feel like it doesn't read well to me. Okay, let's let's pull other cards. Okay, we got four of cups, eight of cups, and this is Persephone, I think. So it's funny we just got Demeter and then Persephone. I mean, the eight of cups makes sense to me. We got eight cups, she's walking away. You know? Love to see you go. Look at that ass. And the four of cups. Uh, no, we just got a chick luxuriating underneath four cups. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And this particular image as a justice card. Like, this person looks like she's... I mean, she's Persephone too, right? Isn't she? Okay, this is just confusion with Mixtress. Watching her try to figure out what the fuck's going on in a tarot deck she doesn't know if she's going to keep. Yes, it is Persephone. So, she's being dragged down into hell right now. Like, okay, so, first of all, I'm not the person to consult about Greek mythology because I don't know shit. But I don't enjoy the Persephone story. The idea that, like, she begrudgingly decided to marry this dude and, like... The whole earth is sad for six months because she's underground with this. I mean, I see it as like a rapey guy because <laughs> he's like making her do something against her will. But she's just like, OK, but this is my lot in life. Like, I'm not into that. I've never been into that. So I'm going to be distracted by that. I'm going to pull that card and I'm going to think, oh, God, she's she's getting pulled away. She's getting dragged down into hell right now. She doesn't look happy. She doesn't look happy at all. She looks upset. And she's being manhandled. Like, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm a Libra. <laughs> That's not balanced. Um, and this lover's card kind of bugs me too. Because it's like, why do we have two cups? Because it makes me think of either a star card or temperance, right? So I think... And does that mean I'm just too rigid in my RWS symbolism? And if I am, fine. Like, I don't have to see cards in a different way. I think we're trying, we're spending a lot of time. And by we, I mean like people that collect too many tarot and oracle decks. <laughs> and maybe I shouldn't say too many. People that collect tarot and oracle decks. Whether they find it to be too many or not. People that collect tarot and oracle decks are... You know, we're spending a lot of time trying to justify our purchases and um, con trying to convince ourselves that we like things. <laughs> when I have found, since I've been doing a lot of extreme decluttering this year, I have found that those things that you can't decide what to do with, 
that you think you might want to let go of, nine times out of 10, if you let go of them, actually, you're like, oh, good. You feel that weight lifting and you're just like that all of that agony, that time spent trying to decide, like trying to convince yourself to like something or trying to find ways to make it work for you. If you just get rid of the damn thing, you can move on with your life because life is too fucking short to spend time with things that you're not enjoying. And again, like all I'm saying all these things in front of this tarot deck, but I don't know actually how this isn't one that I'm going to let go of today. As far as I know, sometimes I can be impulsive. Here's an example of three cards that I really, really like. But that's the thing, right? If there's so many options, you don't have to stick with something that you only kind of like. You don't have to. And I have found that it is making my life much more enjoyable. Like, and this is probably shit that I said in my video that I posted last week too, but I mean, now I, when I decide to use a tarot deck, I open up my little tarot drawer and I pull something out and it's so simple. It's so fucking simple now. And part of it is because most of the ones I kept are ones that I know pretty well. And I enjoy that more. I enjoy using things that are familiar and well-loved versus new. So how do I get past... I mean, obviously, there's going to be new things in my life. But for me, new things are not trusted yet. And I was spending so much of my time in the last like 10 years or so, so much of my time with new things that I was neglecting the tried and true things. And I don't want to neglect my tried and true things anymore. Lately, I've been wearing my favorite perfume of all time, which I haven't been wearing much at all in several years. And it's not because I moved past it because I didn't. It was because I was treating it as it was, as if it was precious. I wasn't enjoying. I have not been spending a lot of time enjoying the things that I actually love. And the thing that people don't talk about often, but I do hear it mentioned sometimes, but the thing that like has been really true for me is spending time trying to pick out new tarot and oracle decks or trying to decide if I like new tarot and oracle decks. And when there's a constant influx of new, 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 it means that you are neglecting the tried and true. And it means I was spending less time with the things that I truly love. I was neglecting the things that I truly love. And lately I've been coming back to them. And it's, it's been really great for me anyway. I would much rather hang out with 10 beloved tarot decks than hang out with what, 100 that I sort of know, but not really, you know? That's just where I'm at. I don't know if any of this made any sense. It did not. I don't think I'm left with an actual decision about this. The hard truth is, if I was still in the return window, because I got this one on Amazon, if I was still in the return window, I would return it and just let it go. But I'm not. So, and it was, it was cheap. It was cheap. It's beautiful. It does have a symbolic language, I think. But I'm just not sure it actually speaks to me. Because when I look at the cards together, there are things that are distracting to me. This one actually is Saturn. So that's cool. 
Um, I'm right now trying to learn the astrology in the, I'm trying to memorize the astrology in the Minor Arcana cards. Nine of Cups is Pisces, but what's the planet? And so sometimes the planet is there and sometimes it's not. So that bugs me. Yeah, I don't know. This probably is going to have to go. Jupiter in Pisces. But yeah, we have no... I mean, I guess maybe the background looks sort of like the storm of Jupiter. So it's possible that this particular tarot deck, it has enough going for it symbolism-wise that if I spent a lot of time with it, getting to know it... I don't think it's useless, you know? It's cheap, it's accessible. I will say, like, if I didn't bitch about this in my initial video, which I probably did, but what the fuck, guys? The crones are not crones. Which I guess makes sense because the creators of this deck, I don't know for sure, but they look like they're in their 20s to me. So, and that's another thing, too. Like... At this point, the tarot and oracle market is so saturated, so fast-paced that we're not most of the time, obviously there's exceptions, but we're not most of the time getting decks that have been well thought out because the time that has been spent on them has been, you know, short. They're getting churned out constantly. I mean, you can see, if you're paying attention, like, there'll be a deck that everyone is talking about in, like, a two-week period, and then they're moving on to another one. Or even two weeks might be too much. Like, a release date of a deck, and everybody has it. Everybody's showing it. Obviously, not everybody, but, like... And you can get sucked in. You can get easily sucked in, but for me, I'm getting to a point where I can see beyond the pretty, thankfully, which is hard for me because I am a child of Venus. I am Libra Sun, Libra Rising, Libra Saturn, Libra Pluto, Libra Mercury. I got a lot of Venus happening. So me, for me to be able to see beyond the pretty is hard. I'm getting better at it though, because I do actually need more than pretty. <laughs> and so, you know, I would love to make more content that is talking about how I feel about something beyond the first impressions. So we'll see how that goes. I don't think I'm actually the right person to do reviews just in general, but I do have thoughts. And yeah, I'm getting to know my tarot decks better right now. So I'll be able to tell you what I think about them. We'll see. Um, I'd like to do that though. So, I mean, this isn't like, you know, obviously I haven't worked with this deck for a long time. I've had it for a month. But my impressions of how it reads, not good. Not good for me. I'm getting the impression that the creators of this tarot deck, I mean, I don't want to say they don't know tarot because tarot is so, it's open. It, it can be known in a very intuitive, like the first time you pick up a Rider-Waite-Smith, you can do a decent reading. So knowing tarot is kind of an ephemeral concept, right? But to me, at least the symbolic language coming forth in this tarot deck is not in alignment with how I understand tarot. Therefore, it's not working for me. And I think sometimes we can get caught in the trap. I think I tried to say this earlier and I just probably got distracted or something. I think we can get caught in the trap where like, for example, let me find one of those heart cards 
with swords that isn't the Three of Swords. When we see something that has a particular type of symbolism, I've seen myself included, myself and many others, go to, like we see, okay, oh, well, I thought this was, no, this is the Five of Swords. Okay, this is Five of Swords. Okay, well, maybe I can work with that. You know, and we think that we need to be able to get on the wavelength of the person that created the art. Like, we think we need to learn how to work with this. When maybe it just doesn't, and that's okay, you know? The fact that my first glance is always going to make me think of Three of Swords when I look at this is not... I mean, maybe it can be a good thing for someone else, but it's not a good thing for me. Because it's just going to add a layer of confusion to the reading process for me. And if I were to, if this were my card of the day, for instance, like I almost always put my card of the day or my card of the month or whatever card I'm currently working with, I'll put in a little stand. I don't want to look at this card for an entire day or an entire month because every time I look at it, I'm be like, three of swords. Oh, no, no, it's not. It's always going to be my first thought. So why, I think, so what I mean, what I'm trying to say here is like, why are we spending all this time trying to like things that maybe we don't like? For me, that's an important question to ask. Maybe it is for you, maybe it's not. But for me, it is. If I'm finding myself trying to talk myself into liking something, it means maybe I don't like it and that's okay because there's so many other decks out there. So many that I already have that I love. Why do I need to spend time trying to love something that I don't? So yeah, this is probably going away. So is this and so is this. So there we go. Declutter with me. Done. <laughs> This is going to go in the recycling bin. This is going to go... It's either going to go to a friend or it's going to go back in the box for another couple of months to see. Once it doesn't feel new to me anymore, does it feel different? You know, because right now novelty is not something that I am enjoying and I don't want to reject it just because it's new. Which I think, as we've shown, I have more reasons than just because it's new. But, yeah. Anyway, thanks for uh, helping me maybe decide some things. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? What do you guys think about this shit? Do you like new shit? I think I convinced myself that I liked new shit for a long time, and I actually don't. I would actually rather not get new shit. And I've always been like that. Like... I mean, yeah, it's exciting to like, you know, take some new stuff out of a box. That's always exciting, but it's not the same thing as deciding how to integrate that new shit into your life. That is not fun for me. And I, it doesn't, I don't need that to be a big part of my life, figuring out how to integrate new shit. I've got everything I need. I'm 41 years old. I've got most of the essentials of this life I either have or I know someone I can borrow it from. I don't need new shit all the time. And if I'm not enjoying new shit, why am I doing it? You know? So I don't know what the fuck I'm going to call this video, but thank you for <laughs> being here. 